So we're going to need a, a simple HTML file, and again, we're, we're going to practice these concepts just directly in an embedded file. We're going to put all our JavaScript and all of that in HTML in, in one file here. That'll just be more efficient for us to, to learn this. Later on, we'll have it, of course, separated into its own separate files that make more sense modularly. But right now, I've got a 10-line HTML file. Uh, it's right there on my desktop, and I recommend you make another copy of it because we're going to use a basic HTML file again in the future. And here's a trick if you don't know this in Windows. Uh, you've made some file, and if you right-click, hold, and drag, so I'm dragging while holding right-click. When I let it go, it pops up right away about would you like to copy or move the file. I will copy. Just uh, That's just a way to make a copy. You can make a copy any way you want. But I like that quick way, just right click and hold, drag your file, select copy from the pop-up menu, you've got another copy. I'm just saying that because we're going to use that, that basic file more than once. And so maybe if you have it ready to go like this, you'll save you some time. So here's our file, and what we're going to do is practice uh, the first version of our JSON, which is to create a simple JSON object and then display it on screen. Um, so in our body here, let's actually first, I've got the heading, uh, let's create a paragraph, <coughs> give that an ID, we'll call it demo. So whatever your HTML file looks like at the least, make sure you've got some container, like a paragraph, some ID. I'm calling it demo, demonstration. Because I'm going to create this JSON data, this JSON object, and then I'm going to display it on screen. So we've got some sort of placeholder that will allow us to then display it on screen. Before the uh, end of the body, let's create a, a uh, script section. I'm going to work with JavaScript, of course. So make a brand new script section. And then right away we'll create a variable and we'll call it text equals. And here is going to be a JSON object. Because we're writing it in embedded like this, we have to write it a little bit differently. First of all, I'm going to wrap the curly braces in quotes, single quotes because we need to use double quotes inside of this thing. When we write something, colon, something, if we had used double quotes outside of the whole thing, that gives us that problem that we've got, okay, open quote, end quote, gibberish, open quote, end quote, gibberish, open quote, end quote. I want it, open quote, JavaScript object, end quote. This will not work. That's why I'm saying here we need to wrap single quotes around the whole thing. And we've talked about that before, and now we'll actually do it. Yes? Yes, exactly. In the curly brackets, it has to be curly uh, In the curly braces, it has to be double quotes. Okay. That's why you use single quotes outside. So it should gray out like that. Um, but you've got single quotes around that JavaScript object. Now, also, we will not be able to do the nice, readable something, uh, colon, something, comma, next line, something, comma, something. We will not be able to break this up into multiple lines. Very subtle. Do you see? That's black. That's gray. We've broken our quotes and such. That's going to be nice and readable, but it will not work. It'll break because we've got the single quotes, one string, and then this breaks. So we're going to have to make it into one long line. Uh, that's why, again, we're going to use a JSON file later. Then in that JSON file, we can have broken it up into multiple lines, nice and readable. That will require a little bit more effort because we will have to, from our job, from our file here, reach into the JavaScript file, uh, the JSON file, pull the data out, parse it, and then display it in HTML. It's going to be more work. We'll get to that. 
For the moment, we will just do it in one embedded way. And so here, finally, the data we're going to add here is, in quotes, name, colon, uh, your full name. Th this is valid right here where we can do that. It's a string, so it can really be anything. We've just been using simple values, but we can name can be the whole thing. So put your whole, your whole name there. I'm still inside the curly braces. I'm not going to break it into another line, comma, space there, just for readability. Another key value pair. Let's say this is going to be showing the storing the person's name and their home address. So let's say street. space colon. Again, those spaces there are just for readability. At least we can kind of spread things out a little bit here instead of having it all junked or uh, stuck together. And so any street address here, I'm going to do 123 Fake Street. And we'll say one more, comma, um, email. So a key value pair, comma, a key value pair, comma, a key value pair, and no more comma. All of that is in curly brackets, and all of that is in single quotes. Now this is this is a JavaScript object. It's inside. It's a it's a string. That is, it's string all inside. This is a big old string inside of text. Maybe it'll make more sense if we call that user. Doesn't matter. Let's call a user. This is an object that stores a user. Makes a little more sense maybe, but obviously this can be called anything. Right now it's a string. It's, it behaves basically as a long list of letters and symbols. It, it's not an object really yet. It's not like how I was showing earlier that then we can say, show me what's in the name field, show me what's in the street field. It doesn't treat it that way yet. It's just a big old string. Next line. Remember, put a semicolon at the end of that. Valid JavaScript. Um, next line. We're going to create another variable. What we need to do now is basically convert that string into the actual JSON object, into an object that has a a, val a, a name of <coughs> a name of name, a name of street, a name of email with a value of Victor, a value of fake street, and a value of that email address. So we will say we'll call this user obj. This is going to be now. This is going to be the object version of that data. User up there is basically the raw data. But now I want to create a version of the data that is an object that I can retrieve the pieces of the object equals. Uh, this will be JSON, JSON, it has to be in all caps. This is a JavaScript command, JSON, dot parse, open close, open close parentheses. So this is like if we had math dot random. Remember when we wanted to make a random number? We had the math um, uh, object and then its method, random. Here we have JSON parse, parse. Let's convert with, let's convert something into JSON, into, into an object with keys and values. The something is user. Right now user holds a string, but now we're going to parse it. We're going to convert it into into a JSON object. The funny thing is, uh, there's it, this has also an opposite, um, 
a mirror image sort of command. Um, don't write this, but let's say we had var user string. That would be JSON. How does that spell again? String if I uh, user obj. This would do the opposite. This would sort of like deconstruct some sort of JSON object that has keys and values and just turn it into raw data. Stringify. I don't know why they didn't call them both something a little bit more logical or big parse. Stringify to me makes sense. We're going to turn this object and stringify it. Perfect. This one, maybe you should call it objectify. But you know, that doesn't quite sound so good. <laughs> and so we're going to objectify the data. That would, would, that would, that's what parse is. We're turning that raw data, parsing it into JSON objects. This would be like the opposite. You can write that down if you want, but make sure you comment it. We're not really going to use that, so make sure it's commented if you might want to make a note of that. This is converts JSON to string. And this one is converts string to JSON. Parse and stringify. So when we were writing our pseudocode, I didn't mention this one at all, just for expediency. Now that we actually have to work with it, that's very important. Take that raw data, turn it into an object. Now that it's an actual object, we can display it on screen. Next line, we'll do um, document dot get element by ID. Remember we have that placeholder, we should have a placeholder paragraph up there called demo dot inner HTML equals. We're going to write something into that placeholder up there. So we need to reference that element in the HTML, the document object, the method here, and then it's, uh, it's uh, property equals to just make it readable. I'm going to break this into the next line. I won't put the semicolon yet. Next line, I'm going to say user obj dot name. finish it right there for the moment. Let's save and run that. Save and run that and should show your name on screen. Let's see if that worked as it's supposed to. Since we didn't put this in any sort of function, there's no trigger, it just does it, it should put your name whatever you have in the name field, whatever you wrote there in quotes, should simply appear on screen. Did that work for everyone? Anyone missing anything? Yes. All right. When we're, now that we're dealing with some JavaScript, remember, if you have any errors, let's just look at our console and see if that gives us any feedback.
hopefully everyone uh, managed uh, to see your your name. That's what this is saying. We've got an object, show me the name field on screen. We did that document dot get element by ID. Okay, well in in the data we have a name field, a street field, and an email field. I also want to show those on screen. Well, this is really nothing new that we've done before about how to show it on screen. So what we'll do is after object name, I'll go back to line 16 here, we'll add plus, so this is some concatenation. In addition to showing the name, then we will say, okay, let's give ourselves a line break. And we have to write this in quotes because this is some plain old HTML. This will be processed as HTML. This is not HTML. If we have that in quotes, it's going to literally print object name name. So here we're going to display, uh, we're going to create the break tag. After the break tag, another plus. Let's take that to the next line. And we'll say user object dot street plus, give us another break, plus. Make sure the pluses are outside of the quotes, or it'll print quotes. And then user obj email. And that's the last item, so be careful about that uh, semicolon. It's at the end of it, of course. We had ended it at object name, but we added more. So make sure that semicolon ends at the end of the statement, not at the end of name. If you save and run that, it'll display that information. It'll display all of the three fields on their own line because we've added those breaks. Okay, so that takes uh, from theory into practice about our first version of JSON. It's just basic data in a long string of JSON uh, data and uh, showing it on screen. The new thing is we've got this parse. Take that raw data and turn it into an object so that we can do this. Here's an object, give me this, um, I'm blanking on the exact term for it, but here's our object and then there's our value. Um, our field, our property, whatever it's officially called, method. Method. If it was a method, it would have the parentheses, wouldn't it? It's more like if we have an object and it's width. What do we call that? It's width, it's height, it's, what is that? It's property. Property, yeah, I believe it's property. This object and the property. The property of email, of object, the property of street. Property. It would be a method if it was parentheses. But anyway, there's that object, and we're showing the data in that object. We're going to do this also with um, uh, now a little more complex. Remember, we said, okay, what if we have a whole thing full of employee information and job titles and, and, and all of that stuff? So we'll create a more complex uh, JSON object and have to now deal with, well, what position inside of the inside of the data do we display? That was that curly, that square bracket syntax. So this one is our basic example of just showing a simple data. And like I said, hopefully you made a copy of your basic file so that we can do it again. So that one right there was the one we just worked on. I've got a copy of it there before I made any changes, so I'm going to open my other file. Make one more copy just in case. So I've got my basic 10 lines again. If you didn't do that, you'll need to delete everything in your 
file just to bring it back down. So whatever you have here, you'll need to delete all of that back down, I suppose, just lines 9 through 19. If you wrote it like mine, just take it back to the basic 10 lines again. We'll start again. We'll need a placeholder again to display it on screen. I shouldn't have deleted my paragraph, but we'll need another paragraph there, or any placeholder. A div could have worked. So this is an empty placeholder. It needs an ID. So we'll call it result. It doesn't matter. And we'll create our script block. This time we're going to write um, more complex. So we'll create a variable again. This time we'll call it db. We're going to make a database here equals single quotes, curly brackets, semicolon. That's our basic syntax. This is going to hold a, a, a JSON uh, string. We'll not, we will not be able to break it into multiple lines at this point. That's why very soon we will move into its own JSON file for formatting, but the computer won't care. It can be all one long string. For us, it might be a little harder to read, but we can live with it. So within the curly brackets, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create employees, colon. Here then is where we will create an array. It's not going to be just a simple key value pair. It's going to be something with a lot of sub values. So we need the square bracket syntax. We need the array syntax. Because within the square brackets, this is where we're going to define sub objects. So we're going to have an object here. With its own key value pair. Um, you don't have to write this yet, but then it's going to look something like this. Employees. Look at this simplified down to the basics. This will be every all of the data of one employee. All of the data of one employee. Here, here, here. I could have four employees with all of the relevant data of an employee. Last name, first name, email, date of birth, salary, blah, blah, blah. All in, encased in this. And this works because it's all inside of the square brackets right there. And all of that is simply the value of this key here, employees. And all of that is wrapped around the whole JSON object. And it has to be in single quotes here because we use double quotes inside. get to that in a moment. So the first employee here we have um, we'll do um, last name some last name. Be careful here about then where, to, where we're adding the rest of these. Remember, we have to be inside of the curly braces because this is defining one employee. I'm going to add a comma after the last name field. Again, it would be really nice to break this into multiple lines. We cannot because of the way we're we're writing, we're, we're building this. So then we'll do first name, we've got the last name, we've got the first name, separated by commas, all within the curly braces. 
we can add much more data, of course, but let's create another employee. We've got at least the last name and the first name of an employee. We can, of course, create many more. But now let's uh, create another another employee here. So now we will put a comma. Now we'll put a comma after these curly braces here. All of this delineates one employee. So comma, another employee. All of that is still within the curly brackets. And it's the same schema, the same setup, last name, comma, first name. So we've already defined that our fields are last name and first name, so we want to reuse the same ones. last name. Curly braces, so the comma for the first name, colon, because it's the key and the value, it's the name and the value. That's it for the moment. Obviously, we can add much more. Uh, but zooming out of it, highlighted there is my first employee. <coughs> highlighted there is there is my first employee. There is my second employee. This is my zeroth employee. This is my first employee. Remember, the computer counts from zero. Both of those are inside of the whole employees table, you could say. Employees. Um, let's see if it works so far. Because obviously there could be many failure points here. Let's try to display some of this data on screen. So on the last example, we needed to parse we need to turn this raw data into an object so that we can reference it via object notation. So, for db obj, could be called anything of course, I'm just putting obj into it to tell myself that it's an object. JSON, parse method, we're about to parse some data. The data is db. So inside of parse, db, parse it, objectify it, put that into that plain old JavaScript object, and then we can work with it. It's db. And then we can start to do the process of displaying it on screen. Same as before. Document, get element. ID, which, which ID? Result. We've got a placeholder up here to display the data. Paragraph with an ID so we can reference it easily. Then its particular property, inner HTML equals, next line. We've got DB OBJ dot employees. And this is the part now. We have two employees. Which one do we mean? We mean the very first one, so we have to reference the square brackets, which of our possible ones, because we've got them in square brackets here. These are the per particular values of this table. There's the object, there's a particular table, well, which one? The first one, which is zero, the zero with one, particularly show me the last name. Let's see if that works, then we'll do first name. Go ahead and save and run that. 
let's see, that should work. So there's my object, there's a particular table, there's a particular uh, field we're looking for, and then the value is that last name. Anyone need any help with running that? Because it is more complex now. That up there can easily be confusing. So uh, then hopefully this starts to click a little bit if I wanted to then also display uh, first name and last name. Let's say I want to display the names here, last name, comma, first name. So that would require, right now we're displaying the last name, we want comma, first name. So we will say, still on line 15, um, plus, because we're adding more to what we're displaying on screen, quotes, comma, space. Remember, we have to tell it exactly what to display on screen. I want comma, I want last name, comma, first name. Obviously, comma, last name, space, first name, or it'll all run together. So I have to also put the space there. Plus. Uh, db obj dot employees still dealing with the zero with employee but now the first name so that's retrieving the zero with item in the array If I go in and put a 1 there, it will dutifully do it, so Kajiwara, comma, Victor. 
again, this is to show you, really, there's no real relationship like we might have in a traditional kind of database. It's just data. It's still up to us to program a way for it to be related. That's how we had seen on the other example that we have all these employees and we added a new field called job. So now the job is related to the table of jobs with then could be further related with the appropriate salary. So there's pros and cons that we can read about this sort of style of database. Um, one of the big pros you might say if you have experience in the old databases is that there isn't this traditional sort of relationship. Uh, you have to kind of develop the relationship yourself and then write your own code for it to be related. Whereas in any other database, basically you click a button and a little key appears and this value is related to that value. It's, 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 it's associated together. Here it won't it won't complain that I'm showing these two different unrelated pieces of data from two unrelated records. It, it won't care. We would have to write the code that, for it to care. Yes? How would we just dump the data? How would we what? what? Say that again? How would we just dump the data? Um, we should just be able to right here I just said okay show DB oh you you only want to see the employees data uh, you only want to see the last names or all the data? No, I just want to see the employees of all, of all the first names. Okay, that would require that we write some sort of loop so that it then systematically goes through and displays each one on a nice line. We will do that in, in a little bit later. Well, I guess my question could be is what is employees, what is that considered? That's the well, the whole thing, DB is, well, technically DB object is the object. This is just all of the string of data, all of these. This is still just the, the, the key, the key or the name, key value. So this is the key on the most basic level. But we could think about it like as a table. If we've got real experience with any other kinds of database, we've got tables, with fields and data. So a table of all employees, a table of all uh, positions, a table of all um, projects. So employees is like a table, although if in JSON it, you don't think about it really as a table. It's still just a key. Employees is the key. Okay, so if this worked, we're going to take it to the next level and we're going to now work with data in a separate JSON file. That way it will give us the ability to break up, you know, it doesn't seem like it's important but you might have noticed it now the ability for us to break this up into multiple lines so that it's much readable you know this this is much readable right here but once I start to do that this is this is gonna be all broken now it's not gonna work anymore no no result if I check my console unterminated string literal if I do that it's no longer a string look at that black it says where's the end where's the end of that uh of that single quote. It's expecting it there, and then a new starting one and this and that. So that's much nicer to look at, but it won't work. So that's why now we're going to start to work with JSON data in its own separate file, so we can do that. That requires other things, though. So what we'll do is... Let's... Uh, let me give you this. I've got something for you in the network folder. If you go back into the network folder, into our class, 
get a copy of the whole folder uh, that I put in there called JSON Practice 1 Start. This is just going to be a list of 9 or 10 graphics. I'm going to show us here, okay, this is a database, it's, sh it's saving data, it's saving text. Well, how do I save a picture? I'll show you how in a moment. Go ahead and grab this whole folder as is. Get a copy of that onto your desktop. What's in the folder is simply nine pictures, nine icons of different social networks. What we're going to do is we're going to create a JSON database that lists uh, nine social networks, what their names are, what their web addresses are, what their um, purpose is, and their icon. <coughs> so I'm going to save all of that data that represents a social network. I'm giving you the picture because in a, in a database, really, you're, you're, any database, really, you're storing text. So if you're going to have a picture in a database, really, the picture is usually going to be saved somewhere in some server, some hard drive somewhere, and the database is simply a reference to where that picture is. Like on my phone, I'm going to take a picture. The picture is going to be stored on my memory card, but somewhere in the Android operating system, there's a database in there that says, the picture that was shot on February 1st at 6 p.m. is right here in the memory card in this folder. The actual raw data of the picture is not stored in the database in my Android phone that has a list of everything going on. It's got a pointer to my data. And I could convert this to this, these pictures into raw text data, but that's just going to make my database get so much bigger and slower. So basically, I'm going to have a reference to a picture in my database, not the actual picture in my database. So everyone should have this, uh, this starting file. Let's go into Notepad. Let's create a new file. Let's save as. Let's save this brand new blank empty file into that JSON practice folder. We will call it I'm just looking to see do we have a JSON format in anywhere here? doesn't matter if we don't have it. But anyway, we're going to save this as... Second to last. I see... YAML. Oh, mine looks different. My last one is YAML and then XML and VHSIC. Huh, you, you're, you guys might have a different format than me. Okay, well, if you guys see JSON in there, go ahead and select it. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to save this. Let's save this as social.json. Okay, so I've got a file. It doesn't even really need to be called or saved as .json, um, but this is the convention. So we've got social.json. Now make a note, and I'll say it again a little bit later. Um, when we test, when we write our code and test this, let's test it in Firefox because Chrome is a little bit more strict with what we're about to do, and it won't work because it's going to be strict about why are you trying to load this external file, it should be coming from a server, blah blah blah. So when we test our code a little bit later, test it in Firefox. Even Firefox will complain a little bit about malformed JSON. Really all of this, don't worry, it'll work just fine when it's on. It's in our real app, if it was on a real server. But right now we're just running at a hard desktop, so it's the browsers are going to complain for security. Just run it in Firefox and we'll be okay.
what we're going to do in this JSON file is build our database. We're going to build our JSON object. And so I've got the curly braces, but because we've got it in its own file, we're not limited to the one long string. So I want to break this up into multiple lines and put tabs and all of that great stuff however I want so that it's readable. So inside the curly braces, then I'm going to write social network colon and then in here is going to be a list of social networks and their various values key and value name and value social network is the name values will follow and there will be many sub values because I want to list the name of the social network I want to list uh, or I want to say a description of the social network an address of the social network and a picture that defines that social network so this I'm gonna further break into multiple lines right there this is going to have a lot of subdata. We've seen that before. We need the brackets. So now I'll go in here and tab a little bit in here. This is going to be one network. Just to show you, then we're going to have a separate, a second network. Um, but we'll have now the freedom to do spaces and such. We won't need this one just yet. So here's our, our first social network. Uh, within the curly braces here I, I can then create a, a JSON uh, object. So um, we'll have name See, uh, just based on what I've got them in the folder, in the folder, let me write this down. Uh, we've got YouTube, we've got Vine, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, the old Instagram icon, Tumblr, Facebook. Anyone know what 9 is? SoundCloud. So we've got nine networks. I'll write them down in a moment. But um, I'm going to say my first network here then is YouTube. Comma. Image. Colon. Pick 01.png. There it is. There's our picture in our database. Very anticlimactic. It's just a reference to a file. The JSON file is in the same folder as my picture, so the path to my picture is easily just that. If I had a more complex structure, I would have to write it something like, you know, this is wrong, but let's say I wrote C drive colon images slash social slash that would that would be more correct it's wrong in that remember if we go back to the JSON documentation the solidus the slash cannot simply be written like that it has to be escaped which needs a reverse solidus so this would be more accurate so in the C drive backslash slash images and so forth actually I guess on Windows it would be a backslash anyway so backslash backslash so don't write this. But if this were like that, if this were in a folder somewhere on our hard drive, this is how we would reference that. Okay, well, if this were on a web server, HTTP colon slash slash, actually backslash backslash slash slash uh, john.com uh, slash images slash pick one. So that's how we, we would then reference the graphic up on a web server. <clears throat> with a full qualified path. And that's why I gave you a folder of pictures. Here's the pictures, let's just reference them, they're in the same folder. What also we are saving about our networks is, 
So comma, we'll do desk description. We'll say the description of YouTube is long form videos. And one more field, we'll do URL. URL colon I believe here now we have to practice what I preached so backslash slash backslash slash um, youtube.com backslash slash any web any YouTube address youtube.com is fine but let's say I put my company address here youtube.com slash PMD interactive and here's just so that it goes somewhere. Okay, so we've got name, YouTube, comma, image, pick one, comma, desk, a description, comma, URL, a URL. That defines one social network. I've got a few more. We won't do them all just yet for expediency. Uh, but I need one more. So, comma, at the very end of line three, comma, because I'm about to add another, another object here. Let's save ourselves some effort and copy and paste. We're going to mistype things. So I'm going to copy line three, paste it to line four. All we need to do then is fill in the next network, the next picture, Zero 02, a new description which will be short form short form videos in some vine address. Um, vine.co, this one is dot co not dot not dot com backslash slash uh, I don't know, I can go to mine. I hope I don't have anything embarrassing there, but there's mine. And okay, maybe we could do all nine of them. It's just a little copy and paste and a little editing, isn't it? But we're building this database of, of networks. So yeah, I'll copy and paste and I'll do the next one. The next one in the list is Twitter. Pick three. The description of Twitter is, we'll say, 140 character. 140 character missives. Some address twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. This is just uh, elementary here. We're just putting together this database in JSON format using all of these networks. The next one is Google Plus. That one is pick four. Google Plus uh, description will say the Google network. Some Google Plus address, we can do google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. Next one is Pinterest.
Now one thing we could do, because we've got it in its own JSON file, we could do this, uh, do a little formatting like this. This is all optional, of course. This will have it looking you know, nicely, nicely um, readable. Pinterest, we could say, uh, what's Pinterest all about? Uh, uh, pictures, and pictures, and pictures. I think we've got a Pinterest as well. Pinterest. Next is uh, Instagram. You can put anything you want here. I'm putting some things. Works, but it's good practice. What's next? Instagram, Tumblr. For the last one, remember to not have a final comma. There's commas for everything except the final entry. The final one is SoundCloud. SoundCloud, what it's about is music and podcasts. So I'm going to put a version of my code, of course, in the network folder at the end of the day. We're going to take a break in a moment, and um, I'll put this in the network folder in case you want it at this point. 
uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write this uh, file to we've, we've built a database and I want to load this on screen uh, via a button press and such. I want it to randomly load a social network. I think first what we'll do is we'll have it just simply display all the networks first then we can program it to display a random one. What's going to happen here is we need to load this data from an external file. We'll see what that entails. Uh, then if you want to display all the data of our database, well that requires a loop. Loop through the data to then display it on screen. Then if you want to display it randomly, well that requires more coding to think of random numbers between one and whatever and then display it on screen. So um, let's take one more break. It's 8.20. We'll We'll be back at 8.30. I'll put a copy of mine in the network folder. What you should do actually before your break is, once again, you should have a basic HTML file one more time to work with, and then we will, uh, we will create and we'll work with that.